Hey there, today I'm going to take you guys through a tutorial. Well, it's you're not really going to paint along with me. I'm just showing you how I paint white dogs. And I am I took a time lapse video basically while I was painting a dog so that I could explain to you guys what I'm doing. I'll let you know the different colors that I use and just general tips. So let's get started. This was a photo that was sent to me by my client and this is a perfect example of a beautiful photo. I have a list of things that the client should look for before I paint their dog or the, sorry, the list that they should send me of requirements for the photo. One is that the lighting is great, that the dog is facing forward and that I can see the dog's chest. I usually paint only from the chest up when I'm doing client work like this. Another thing is that you want them to be at the dog's level you don't want photos where the lighting's really bad or the dogs turn to the side, unless that's how they want you to paint the photo. So this is a perfect photo. The other thing I wanna mention, and this might totally shock you guys, I traced this dog onto my watercolor paper. Now let me explain why I do that. The first thing is when you're painting someone's pet, you wanna get all the details as close as possible. If their eye is slightly uh, like larger than it normally is, or their nose is, is not in the right position, it's going to make the dog look less like their dog. Um, so that's the first reason I do it. The second reason is it saves me a ton of time. Yes, I could draw this dog. I have lots of experience with drawing and I do draw dogs when I'm doing stuff like my stationary lines, but when I'm painting somebody's pet, I want to save time and it helps me save time by doing that. Third, and this is probably the most important reason, is if you are sketching on watercolor paper and you're erasing, because more than likely you're going to make a mistake when you're drawing the dog and want to redraw something, you're removing part of the texture of the watercolor paper, which is ruining the integrity of the paper and ultimately the integrity of your painting. So those are the three reasons I trace pets when I'm drawing them or when I'm painting them for a client. Okay, so let's get into the actual painting. Like I said, I trace the painting and, or the dog, <laughs> and then I come in and I make sure that my pencil lines are as light as possible. I like to use a gum eraser because a gum eraser is going to be a lot gentler on your paper and I just lightly tap it down to the paper. I do not scrub because I don't want to ruin that texture. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, since this dog is white, I don't always do this, but I wanted to make a pretty background this time. So I went ahead and I painted a background, which is automatically going to make the pet look a lot lighter. So that's a trick that you can do if you are you know, painting a pet portrait and want the white dog to stand out more. So I just went ahead and did a light wash. Make sure you really keep your watercolor paper wet when you're doing this because you wanna make sure that you don't get any hard dry lines because that's not gonna look like a nice even wash. Then something that I really like to do in the beginning is put in the eyes and the nose. Otherwise your painting can just look like it doesn't have a direction. So I really like to do that. And I'm actually not using black here. I'm using a mixture of indigo and sienna brown with a tiny bit of yellow in it. And you get kind of this grayish tone. And if you guys have never painted with me before or have done watercolor, watercolor should always start your very lightest values in the beginning and then go dark. Once you go dark, you can't go backwards. You can only make things darker. So remember that with watercolor, that's why my first layer is my lightest layer. Now I just wanted to erase some of those extra pencil lines to make sure they're not too thick. And I'm mixing together kind of like a bluish brownish gray and I'm, putting this layer all over the entire dog. Now don't worry, this is gonna look really brown, right? But it's gonna dry lighter and we're gonna build on top of it. So that first layer is gonna look really white no matter what. And then while the paint's wet, I just come in and add some darker shadows of that same color paint where the dog has some shadows on it. So a good way to, to see this is just to squint your eyes at a photo. It'll really help you see where those values are. And I like to do it when the paint's wet so it bleeds nicely and it looks really soft like fur. Otherwise, you'll get pretty harsh lines. All right, so now I need to add some of that texture into the dog's fur. I'm using that same brown blue color that um, I was using before. 
and I want to make sure I have dark values of it and light values and I just zoomed in to where that dog's ear is in the photo and just started painting where I saw those lines. Now I use water to gently blend the line, so clean water, because it makes it a lot softer. And I also alternate between using darker tones of this color that I'm using on the right hand side and lighter tones. If you use the same tone or same saturation, it's gonna look really bland. So make sure you alternate. You could even make some of the lines a little more brown or some a little more blue or black or whatever. Not black really, more like gray. So I'm just adding all this texture. It can feel like a really slow process when you're doing this. So I recommend I zoom into one part of the dog. So like this ear down, down here. And I just focus on that small bit because it can feel overwhelming if you're looking at the entire painting. Another thing about me is I usually get bored. So I can tell probably about right now I'm getting bored and I don't want to paint the entire texture of the fur right now. I want to move on to something else. That is classic me. It doesn't make the best videos, so I apologize, but I think I'm about to move into the eyes here. So I'm gonna paint with that same indigo and sienna brown around the eye. Dogs have that eyeliner look. And then I like to paint the nostrils as well. And those are the darkest parts of the dog, so the inside of the nostrils. And you could use pure black for this if you want, but I just use that color combination that I was talking about earlier. Then I'm ready to go back <laughs> into the fur texture and I'm just working on all those little shadows. I'm using a combination of wet on wet and wet on dry and just keep an eye out for all the small details. They're really important. Now I'm gonna mix up a kind of a bluer shade and paint the nose and be sure to leave a highlight on the nose. So there's always a highlight on the top and then underneath the nostrils. And I use a blue here and you would not know the difference. Same thing for his little mouth here. I'm using that same color. It's a bluish color, but it nobody ever notices. I rarely use black in my paintings because you don't need to. You can trick the eye with other colors. I'm just adding, dogs usually have that little mustache underneath their nose. <laughs> and then when you do the eyes, make sure you use a variety of colors. You want to use blues and browns or depending on the dog's eye color. It's important to make them interesting to look at and to also leave that little white highlight. Now I'm just going in and wherever I see a shadow, I'm adding in those shadows. I'm using a wet on wet technique. So I'm wetting the paper and then using the wet watercolor paint to kind of smooth it around. Um, like I said in the beginning, if you squint your eyes and look at the picture, it'll really help you to see where all these shadows are. And the shadows are how you're gonna make your painting look realistic. Now I'm going to come back in and this dog has some brown around his mouth and I know that that might f seem kind of gross, but it actually is part of what the dog looks like. So I always include it. It's just normal. It's just like staining, but those types of dogs always have that. So I include it unless my client asks me not to include it. Now I'm just adding in more shadow. It'll always be darker underneath their chin. I used a blue color for this with a little bit of the brown. And as you can see, the more shadows I add, the more realistic this is becoming and the more it looks like it's kind of like popping out and looks more realistic. I'm adding a darker color to his mouth and you wanna make sure, like I said in the beginning, that you're going from light values to dark because you can't, once you paint dark with watercolor, you can't go backwards. So I'm adding just all of these details and more details to the nose. I'm layering more and more and making sure to leave shadows in some areas. Just continuing to add more and more texture. So these are just little lines and I'm taking the paint and then I'm adding the water to it to kind of smooth it around. And then we're gonna do this tongue and we're gonna add that little shadow under his mouth. Super important to make sure you have that on the tongue and then just more and more of this texture. So you'll notice when you're looking at a dog like a poodle that's um, really focus on the shadows that the curls create because that will help you in your painting. Some of the shadows will be bigger, some of the shadows will be thinner. Doing that will really help you. 
and I'm adding different col not totally different colors, but some of these lines are more blue, some of them are more brown. Just lightly adding all this. And it's probably gonna get pretty boring here because <laughs> I'm literally just making a million lines to make all this curly hair. Now, their chest, because they usually get shaved on their chest, I think, they're really curly cues. So I'm almost doing these half circles and I'm making sure to alternate my colors. So some of my saturation of this paint is darker. I also, as a whole, made the curls on the bottom, the shadows look darker than on the face. And uh, like I said, I get bored. So I alternate between the top and the bottom of this dog because <laughs> I'm probably just getting sick of making all those little curly cues. I'm adding in more and more shadows. Now, I get the question a lot, how do you know if you've gone too far in your painting? And I hate to break it to you, but you have to go too far to know that you've gone too far. Now, you won't do this every single time you paint, but once you do it once or twice, you'll know when your limit is. And I could tell that if I kept going on this painting, it was going to go a little bit too far. So I'm almost ready to wrap it up. I just want to do a couple more finite details. Um, I'm probably looking at the painting right, or the um, photo right now to make sure I got all the details right. Now I just add the final details and I like to um, just really look at the picture and make sure I got everything like the eyes are super important so make sure you focus on that also that little line that's down the middle of a dog's nose is very important and can add a lot so make sure you get those eyes and nose right because they're super super important and um, they really draw your eye in plus that's what pet owners stare at so you want to make sure to get them right and then the last thing that I'm going to do it looks like I'm just adding in some extra shadows here around the teeth and around his little eyes here is I like to use a white paint and I use bleed proof white and I add in if I didn't get the highlights right with leaving the paper I add in just little tiny dots on the eyes and on the nose and anywhere it needs a little bit of white and that is it this painting is just about finished <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'm usually really good about writing back if you guys have any questions. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me at Lavender and C. I'm also on Skillshare with classes as well. Um, if you have any suggestions on tutorials you'd like to see for watercolor painting, I'd love to hear about them. And thanks again for watching.